The Book of the Prophet Isaiah, Chapter 1 The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bru bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land strangers devoured in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts has left Unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams, and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks, or of lambs, or of he-goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Every one loveth gifts, and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries, and avenge me of my enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, and take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges as at first, and thy counselors as at the beginning, Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired, and ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak tree, oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. And the strong shall be as tow, and the maker of it as a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. Welcome to Isaiah. Isaiah is often considered to be the most complicated, hardest to read book. And there's a good reason for that, but it is highly understandable if you understand where Isaiah is coming from and why he speaks the way he does. First off, Isaiah is 2,700 years ago. He's a highly literate, highly poetic man, and he uses images 
rather than bullet points to try and get his audience, which is the people, rebellious apostate people of Israel, to understand where they stand. Basically, this is the, the 66 chapters of the book of Isaiah are revelation to Isaiah for a very troubled world. Israel is apostate. Uh, they have rebelled totally. They were children when they came out of Egypt, figuratively speaking. They are now adults in the promised land, and they have turned against God. Their sins are like unhealed wounds, and they have, in essence, a spiritual cancer that is all the way through all of Israel and colors everything that happens. Uh, in verse 4, we have the first title of the Savior that we have recorded, actually. It's called the Holy One of Israel. That appears 30 times in Isaiah, two times in Jeremiah, and once in 2 Kings where uh, Isaiah is talking again. This is a title that is reserved, the Holy One of Israel, for Jesus. And so this is a very messianic, very talking and getting people to look forward to the second coming and understand who they have rebelled against and who they need to worship in order to be safe from all the things that they're going to have happen as a nation if they don't repent. Now there's a few items that we'll cover here. The idea, idea of a cottage in a vineyard uh, is not something that you would normally know. But when they had the grape harvest or they had the cucumber harvest, they used to make booze out of branches that they would, and they would, these were crudely made and hastily made, and they would put them in the, in the fields, in the vineyards, so that they could watch over and protect them because nobody was going to steal the grapes before they were ripe or the cucumbers before they were ripe, but when they're ripe, there were thieves that would take anything and everything. And so they would have these booths made, and the booths were very, very crudely made, very hastily made, and they would fall apart shortly after the harvest was over. And what he's talking about is that Jerusalem, which was built with such care, so built out of stone and all kinds of other lasting things, would be dilapidated, would be ruined, uh, would fall apart, basically the same as those booths would. Uh, in verse 9, they talk about a small remnant. And basically, uh, Isaiah is promising that a small portion of the tribe of Judah would be preserved for future benefit. Uh, verses 10 to 15 talk about the hypocrisy of insincere worship. The Lord is not rejecting the law of Moses here. He is not saying he did, does not want offerings. What he wants is he wants sincere worship as opposed to just the plain outward ordinances where people were going through the motions but their hearts were corrupt inside. They wanted to appear righteous but they weren't righteous inside. And verses 16 to 20 was a call to repent for Israel as a whole nation and a promise of forgiveness if they did. In verse 16, it talks about washing. This means being baptized. They had baptismal fonts then. And, uh, but it didn't say that. It just said wash. In verses 19 to 20, the people have a choice. They can choose a blessing or they can choose a cursing with a sure knowledge that they would get either whatever they chose, but that it would happen to them as a nation, not just as individuals, because as a nation, they were about as morally corrupt as it was possible to be and still be on the face of the earth and not have been killed. Heavenly Father, Savior, the Lord had been so incredibly patient with these people. It was absolutely marvelous example of love that we can learn. He's, he's willing to be patient and long-suffering, but eventually there comes an end to the patience. And he gives us a choice. We can have either a blessing or a cursing, but we make the choice by continuing to do the things that could bring the curse, or by repenting and having and doing the things that would bring the blessings, but the choice is ours. And this is, was Isaiah's challenge to the people. It's your choice, not mine. I'll tell you what can happen, but you're the ones that are going to have to choose.